What's going on guys? My name's Corey Kamori and welcome to Music Breakdowns here on the Breakdown channel. And today I have a guest with me again, Mr. I'm John Conway. All right, John, thank you for... Uh, that wasn't how we rehearsed it. No. I, was, I was really ready to jump in there and introduce myself. Do you myself. want to redo it? No. It's all good. We like to just fly off the cuff here because we talked about doing like some really rehearsed like intro and I think I did it really well, the take that I kind of just came up with off the top of my head and now <laughs> it just kind of went to shit, so whatever. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so much for that. <clears throat> it's well, kind of like our idea of what we wanted to do today. Yeah, but we're not going to mention that because we may still do that at some point in the future. Uh, but in today's video, we're going to be discussing new metal bands, new metal albums, and new metal songs that all had an impact on us that we really enjoyed, and maybe some concert experiences as well that we um, we were able to go to that were focused around new metal bands. And then if we have some time, we're going to talk about some really shitty <laughs> new metal bands, songs, albums, all that stuff. Which I'm sure everybody's just going to think this whole list of things is going to be <laughs> probably shitty new metal bands. So just disclaimer, we're not taking ourselves seriously at all during this. We're so gonna, we're, you can't hurt our feelings. I, I'm going to do my best to try to get this to be a segment on metalsucks.com. And we'll, you know, <laughs> everybody in the comment section will oh absolutely love it. It'll be like, in today's episode, uh, Corey Taylor said this. And, <laughs> you know, although now that we mentioned, I'm, I am kind of like embarrassed and ashamed of how much of my musical tastes today <laughs> were made up of new metal bands back in uh that I was listening to back in, in middle school um i guess i should just embrace it yeah well i think that's probably the best thing to do because that's what i've done because <laughs> that's the stuff that got me into metal was new metal I, I, before hearing you know bands like deftones and disturbed and stuff like that i the heaviest thing I had ever heard was Three Sugar Doors Ray. Down. <laughs> that was close. Yeah, wow. pretty close. Pretty close. Dang. But for me, you know, again, I heard those distorted guitars in, you know, Three Doors Down. I was like, that's really cool. I like that. And then I got introduced <laughs> to the even heavier shit, and I was like, I really like that. All right, not going to lie. Um, back when CD burners were, like, uh, pretty cool and burning CDs all the time, Kryptonite made it on probably my first seven rock mixes, so... Uh, it's for it's forever now. And the internet con- knows all our secrets. That and Shaggy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, it wasn't me. <laughs> that was the one. <laughs> it was that one. Yeah. Oh my god. But um. Fantastic. Yeah. I. You know, I feel like I had some grunge background thanks to my my brother and sister are five and six years older than me. So back in the, you know, mid to late nineties, you know, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Rage, all that stuff was was being played and so i guess they started listening to corn deftones uh the, you know i really picked that up from them and then started listening to metallica and just stayed with that kind of heavy sound and i kind of just ran away with metallica but these are kind of the bands that i was listening to that supplemented metallica um i hadn't ventured too far into anything too heavy i think slipknot is probably about the heaviest um that that i got until in flames and opeth but that'll be for another time so mm. we, we'll have to do a, another episode that is our metal journey here on the breakdown channel <laughs> so oh so I'll, do we oh. want to get straight into our, yeah. our 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 lists here of songs yeah. albums and how do you want to start well, this out <clears throat> i just wanted to say that this they're not really in any particular order um we thought about doing like a top 10 top five thing but um i think we'll just uh, kind of take turns talking about albums. I'm sure looking at your list, we share some of the same ones. And then, uh, so we'll just kind of do albums and then we'll do, I've got a couple singles on here. And then, you know, you said we do the the, the concert experience. I yeah. think it's, pre- it's pretty special for both of us. So um, cool. Well, I'll we'll let you kick that. it off then. We'll get off with your, uh, <laughs> we'll get off. <laughs> Not that kind of video for you. <laughs> So let's get started off then with your your first pick here. All right. Again, no particular order. Just first one that comes to my mind. I got to start with Corn. All right. In particular, I can't actually pick an album. Um, I remember the first album, the cover, um, very vividly. You know, the little girl is on the swing set. The shadow of the guy with the knives, like Edward Scissorhands guy. And then on the back of it, footsteps leading up to her and she's gone. Right. I remember that. I remember Follow the Leader. Edward you Scissorhands, know, the pedophile <laughs> edition. Brother and sister, again, always, you know, those were, the, those were um, oh, and Life is Peachy too, right? So those those first three. But for me, it wasn't until Issues uh, came out. I guess I was, I was right in middle school, and uh, I don't know which song I heard first, but, I mean, all of those singles just 
still mean a lot to me. I remember being at the gym and falling away from me. Yes. Uh, somebody, someone. I remember yes. that music video of the fly going around the room. Yes. I love that song. Make me bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was a couple. I think those are the those are the, the only like radio singles I remember hearing or being on TRL. Now, um, now, uh, but there were some good B cuts on there too. So, w- so you say that was the one that kind of like connected with you the most. Like, did oh, you yeah. did you listen to like Follow the Leader, or did that one not have as much of resonance with well, you? Well, I think. Maybe I just wasn't old enough yet, but going back, Follow the Leader does have a lot of the elements that Issues has, mm-hmm. but Issues has, I don't know, I guess they sold out, some people would say, right? They fell into their musical, like the verse, chorus, verse, chorus. I mean, they were very catchy. Like I said, they were on MTV with these. So mm-hmm. um, it was a really well-produced album, um, and it just had a lot of hits, and I think I just... You know, it was popular at the time. All my little metalhead friends, you know, we would listen to it. Uh, I feel like Follow the Leader going back with Freak on a Leash on it. You know, that it, it does have a lot of those elements. Mm-hmm. Life is Peachy is a little more raw. And even the self-titled one, I probably didn't get much past Blind and Shoots and Ladders on the first so one. So you never listened to Daddy? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think I really comprehended what was going on listening to that one. Or That one f- kind of fucked me up for a little bit when I first heard it. I was like, wow, this is... Yeah. What the fuck? Like, right. And I don't, I feel like issues, even though some of the material, like the lyrics probably are just as, you know, sadistic and mm-hmm. dark, but, um, yeah, I kind of, those always felt a little more edgy. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, I, I ended up, those are the, really the first, you know, talking about corn in general, the first four albums, you know, I could, I'm definitely pretty familiar with, uh, like, you know, it opening up with, doesn't it open up with twist life is peachy. Isn't that how it starts? The album. I can't remember honestly. Yeah, so because um, that's the album that has Adidas, Adidas on it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So this, like I said, those I guess they were, I liked more of the how good issues sounded with the hooks and stuff. I wasn't really listening to that dark deep. I wasn't listening for that lyrical value of him mm-hmm. and those uh, things that he went through. But um, so would you say that this is the most influential like? new metal album that you listened to at the time and then it kind of helped get you into all these other things no, or I don't have an, just one of the ones that it's just one of the first ones that stood out I don't have I, I don't think I could put these in any order I would have to sit down and like chronologically map them out because it all kind of happened in middle school yeah um, all of these maybe a little bit in high school but yeah that's that was the one at the top of my list so cool I think I was able to kind of I, don't know, I was able to kind of narrow mine down to being kind of like a top five but i don't want to list it as definitively a top five but these are the the five for me that instantly jumped out to me as like this is really important uh i will throw like an honorable mention out first before i really get into those other five um and the honorable mention would be um slipknot's volume three Mm -hmm. um that was the first slipknot album i bought and it was one of the albums where backing up the first experience I had listening to Slipknot was I was with a friend in a Barnes and Noble and Barnes and Noble used to have those little areas where you could listen to music. Right. They had the headphones you could choose. At one point it wasn't even samples of a song. It was an entire song. You could go through an album and pick out like entire songs to listen to. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine, when I was about, Oh my God, geez, I think I was like 14 or something like that. We went to a Barnes and Noble and he goes, Hey, you heard of this band before I've been listening to them a lot. They're, fucking killer i was like no i've never heard of this and he played slipknot for me and the song he played for me was the heretic anthem and i was like what the fuck is this (laughs) and i went home and i hopped on the computer and i went onto youtube old old youtube and i looked up the disaster piece live album and they had the heretic anthem on there so I clicked it because I didn't really know what these guys looked like. They didn't have anything on that cover for right. the Iowa album, at least. Yeah. Um, and when I looked or it vo- up, Volume Three, right? Or Is Volume Three as well. Talking? But I'm talking about what led me into Volume Three. Oh, gotcha. Because again. I lo- I watched that live video and I went, oh my god, this is the most terrifying because, thing I've ever fucking because seen. You didn't thumb through to find their first album. That would have given you. A- I no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I, did. I just was like, I'll just go with this one, right? Because I recognized the song and I was like, Jesus Christ, this is fucking terrifying, and I fucking love it. Oh my god, I love it. But at the time, you know, my parents were a little like, 
they were pretty open minded, let me listen to whatever I wanted to listen to. But at the same time, I had to kind of be careful with, you know, what I was like potentially exposing my brother and sister to. Right. Being that I was the oldest, I didn't want them to like listen to something and be like, oh, well, Corey let me listen to that. And I'll be like, oh, shit. That was like my life. So, so I, was, I was a little brother. So, so for me, <laughs> I, did, I, I, I just was very conscious of that growing up. And um, I noticed that volume three had just come out 2004, 2005, something around that time. And I was like, oh, this album doesn't say uh, explicit content on it. This one's a clean album. I'll, I'll buy that off of iTunes. <laughs> this is their new album anyway. I want to listen to it. Right. And it fucking blew me away. I was like, holy shit, this is great. This is so good. And it was an album that, again, was really loud and aggressive, but they, like, they said like a couple of curse words on it. And it wasn't one of those things where I was going to get in trouble listening to it or showing my brother and sister that stuff. My yeah. sister really didn't give a shit about Just it. Just play Vermilion Part 2, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my brother and I loved it, especially some of the drumline parts where it felt like a marching band was playing. We were just, we'd never heard anything like that before in music, especially heavy music. Right. Um, so that was a really, really big album for me. And still to this day, I, I really, really enjoy it. I um, or uh, this three. is volume three. This is volume three. I can't three. figure out which ones you're talking about. I know, I'm sorry. I started with Iowa because that was the first song was introduced from Iowa to me. Gotcha. Uh, but that's my honorable mention, uh, and yeah. So, what 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 else do you have on your list? I'm going to talk about Slipknot a little later, but I have a fun uh, funny story to me, anyways, about when I think of Slipknot in my time in middle school. So I'm I don't know if you can tell I'm a little bit older than Corey, a couple years, a few years, right? Just a wee bit. So like my experience, you know, when I'm in middle school doing all this, he's very easily could have been in fifth grade, fourth grade. And then when you were in high school, now the internet's going to sit there doing math <laughs> and be like, oh, let's figure out exactly so you, where they were at what point, how old they were. Yeah, that's fine. Um, creepy. <clears throat> and then when you're in high school, I, you know, I could have been a freshman in college, I guess, depending on where we're at. So it's kind of funny where you're sharing like your first time being introduced to Slipknot. Mine was I was younger than you were at the time that you you were introduced to him. And I can't remember who introduced me to them, but it might have been this kid, Zach, that was from New York, and he was he was just wild, and um, which makes sense because that first album was intense. And, um, you know, I remember we all had it, and like I said, I'll talk about them a little later in the singles section, but um, I remember playing The Sims on computer, and there was this patch that you could get. I don't even know what if that's even the right thing to call it, but it's called The Seven Deadly Sims, and it was like a way that you could download <laughs> these customized skins and, and items for The Sims. So it was great because the guy must have liked metal because what he did was he took like the corn members and Slipknot members and he made outfits and you could actually import them. <laughs> it's how I learned what a zip so, file so was. So it was a mod for it. Yeah, it was a mod, right? Okay. So there were zip files. I had to use WinZip to uh, to get them to work. Good old WinZip. And I had all of the members of Slipknot we had, you know, and um, we would make this. Uh, so this is like Big Brother, the Slipknot and Corn <laughs> edition. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, uh, yeah, it almost could have been like a reality show. Mm -hmm. And we would end up using clown's head and making like a, a homeless looking like clown guy that would just hang around <laughs> and not have a job and play The Sims. So I still remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That's honestly one of my biggest memories of Slipknot was always putting those guys into the. In, into the Sims. They, they missed that endorsement deal there. They should have got up with EA and, you know, Slipknot Dude, Sims edition. It was such a cool mod because the guys, he was, like I said, he was clearly into metal. So we'd have like metal looking guitars and like all kinds of like gothic black looking stuff, you know, so it was like mm -hmm. really, really cool to to have on The Sims. Um, wow. Yeah, I liked it. That's but uh, <laughs> So, but uh, next on the list, uh, Deftones. Death White tones. Pony, man. You cannot mention Gosh. anything new metal related without mentioning Deftones. And Adrenaline's great around the fur, all that. Again, Which is why I'm letting you mention it, because I didn't have them on here. Yeah. But at the same time, I know that you are way more into Deftones as far as the experience you mm -hmm. had growing up listening to them and the impact they had. Yeah, on it was you. big. This is one that my um, brother and sister definitely um, would, would play around the house or in, in the car. They, uh, my dad actually refers to adrenaline as that one blue CD that was always in the CD player because they would just listen to it all the time. I remember like board was, you know, that first track on there uh, around the fur, uh, um, 
God, what is it? Shove it, that track. I mean, I learned that riff on guitar and drop D, you know, I mean, that was really cool. But White Pony felt kind of similar to the way Issues felt with Corn. I mean, it was just, it felt fully fleshed out. It felt fully produced. I liked how, like, clean it sounded. And they had some great, great singles and some some kind of B tracks on that. Um, I mean, Back to School, that one was kind of like a slow burn. But I mean, I remember the track with like Digital Bath is, is the next one. And I think that track really influenced my affinity for dynamics in metal. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like, you know, how it, how it can uh, be very loud, very intense, very in your face, and then they can draw it back. And um, Deftones are really good at creating that very ambient, spacey, um, echoey, you know, very reverb like verse or chorus or whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like a wall of sound hitting you. And, and I'm, you know, looking at this besides, and this band did not make the list cause I don't think they're new metal. I think looking at some of those lists, you didn't either, but Incubus was pretty good at doing that too. I mm-hmm. liked a lot of their dynamics, but Deftones was uh, looking back on it. The first really heavy band that could, they knew when to turn it on and turn it off. And as a kid, I mean, that was, that was really cool and nobody else was doing it. Um, I actually remember my first experience listening to Deftones, and it was the exact same time that I was introduced to just new metal as a whole. And um, it was the song uh, Change in the House of Flies. Oh, yeah. And I don't think I'd ever heard anything that atmospheric before mm-hmm. that because I was really young. And it was, and this will pop up again uh, later in the video, but it was through a Dragon Ball Z. Uh, VHS that had Drowning Pool, Deftones, and Disturbed Nice as the music. It was, uh, I think it was uh, The Revenge of Cooler. Or some It was one of those, but it, it, I had never really heard music that aggressive before. That, and then to hear Change, I had never heard anything that, again, it was just dripping in atmosphere. Oh, you, it sounds like he's... Like his vocal booth is, I mean, he's underwater. It's like or you he's can in just a hear cavern, or cavern. like it's just. It's like I can hear like it just dripping. Like I feel yeah. like he gets so, like, I mean, it just feels so intimate. Like with the microphone, you can hear like mm-hmm. every little sound that his voice makes. Those you know things that people normally would try to cover up and edit out. You know, Gino loved to have those in there, and that's what really made it. Um, what made it good. So you jumped a little bit ahead in the track list. I mean, I still have it in my mind. There was a couple forgettable ones in there. I mean, he's got he's still got those like I think they're pretty lame. His lyrics, the one about his address being something. It's like he like that's the chorus. What Chino's lyrics? Yeah, and that's so there was a lot of those, and I was notorious for song skipping uh, back in middle school. But unless the album was just you know perfect, but I, I skipped around a lot on on White Pony. But I feel like I probably the reason why I include this album is I definitely listen to more of them than, than not. Um, well, you know, with his writing process, he tends to get either really high or really drunk when writing stuff. Makes sense. And he just kind of just, it's just stream. Of, he likes to write stream of consciousness type of stuff. Even if he's not using substances or drinking or whatever, like he just likes to just yeah. kind of let it and it's, come in in an ethereal fashion where it's just like, I don't know what the fuck that is. It makes sense. And it's hit or miss sometimes. I mean, but uh, yeah, I can just hear it now. I can't remember the name of the song, but he's just like literally my address is six six four three. Like, and he's like singing it, and I'm just like, all right, skip. I'm sure someone but, in the comments will be like, it's this song. I know, I don't care. Um, then knife party. Oh yeah, the eye. Yes. Um, jeez, that riff, man, that guitar riff. It's just I can. I mean, that just takes me back. And that's another example of the dynamics. I mean, it's just that strumming guitar. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, I mean, the whole band just hits you in the face. And then the chorus is super catchy. And then, of course, the 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 singer, the, the, the woman singer, mm-hmm. that just totally blows me away every time. Did you um, mention, you didn't mention Passenger yet. I'm not getting there. Passenger. Are you getting there? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Knife Party 7. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm, I'm probably forgetting one in between there, but I think change is next. I think change is nine. I believe so. I can look up the set list while you're. Uh, oh man, or the track like, list. We got to go back into our new metal days before, you know, back with slow internet to where we couldn't just look it up. I but, know, right? But yeah, passenger was. I think passenger was one of the later ones that somebody had to point out to me that that was Maynard from Tool, and then once I heard that, I mean, that was 
definitely my favorite track on there for sure. I mean, I saw you guys play it and Passenger well, is kinda... nine and Change is ten. Oh, all right. Okay. So I got it back. Korea was after Knife Party. Um, but yeah, you know, before I was in Komori and heard you guys play it, I mean, I kind of liked it. I kind of got excited, right? Just a little bit. <laughs> so I'll sh- I'll spare you the story. Yeah. That's for, that's for <laughs> but yeah. So and then White Pony and then it's got that Pink Maggot track at the end that kind of mm-hmm. reprises Back to School, which was really weird. Um, I can't recall too many new metal bands doing something like that. Um, the thing I always appreciated about them was their um, ability to again, like we said, create atmosphere, but then really incorporate a lot of those like electronic elements like they they incorporated like dj scratching or just like just dj and electronic elements in a way that a lot of bands in the new metal genre didn't do after them because they really did establish utilizing that instrument in the overall sound of their music and then you get guys like limp biscuit and slipknot and a bunch of other people that would incorporate just like straight up scratch DJ scratching and it wasn't really about setting the mood like a lot of the electronic elements have a very soundscapey kind of vibe to them and that's what I always appreciate about them because a lot of their stuff can be hooky it can be it could stick in your head for days but then they weren't afraid to get weird with a lot of their stuff right they very much were just in uncharted territory just creating you know this new sound they were really instrumental in what this sound evolved into and became Mm-hmm. And I think to this day they still are pushing that sound even further. I mean, they're uh, I wasn't that big a fan of uh, the last album that came out, Gore, but they still had some really cool experimental elements on it that took that new metal like f- like genre and like the the key um, components to m- new metal, and they just expanded upon it in a way that I didn't really think you could even do anymore. Right. So th- they're a band that I've always loved that always will have my respect because they're just pioneers. And I didn't realize that they, they're they literally, they've been a band as long as I've been alive since you, until you got me that shirt. Oh, yeah, that's so right. So I don't even, I'm going back, like Adrenaline, that's the first one that I know of. So, I mean, I, there's probably somebody screaming at me right now that yeah. they've got to have stuff before that. Leave those, it in the comments below, please. Yeah. I look at all the comments. Nice, yeah. mean, you indifferent. Wanna, all that stuff. You want to go next? I've got sure. A, I've got a pretty good one next. So. Um. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll get into my my five. So at five again, this doesn't necessarily have to be in any particular order, but this is what I put at the bottom here. Uh, I've got Meteora by Lincoln Park. Ooh. Um. I also have a Lincoln Park album. Yeah. Not Meteora. Oh. <laughs> we'll have to see what it is. It's probably is it minutes to midnight? No. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> God. I, did you ever listen to the the really weird album they put out? The um oh my god, what the fuck is the name of it? The one that had the catalyst on it and waiting for the end and oh my god, I nope. can't I can't remember it. Anyway, that album really fucking good now after listening to a lot of progressive rock and metal. Going back and listening to that album, I fucking love it. When I Noted. first heard it, I was like, where's the rapping? Where's the fucking screaming? This is bullshit. <laughs> But listening to it now is it's so fucking good. It's very it sounds like a it feels like a soundtrack to a movie. Is that the Shadow of the Sun album? Uh, yeah, it's that. Whatever. Oh my god, I hated that song. Yeah, I I have to look it up here in a, in a minute. But um, well, so but anyway, going back to uh, Meteora, this album for me, um, I mean, obviously the first one I ever heard from them was Hyper Theory. And I loved Hyper Theory. But for me, Meteora took all of the elements that Hyper Theory had and expanded upon them and it created a more dynamic sound. And then as far as production wise, I feel like production wise, Meteora sounds just a little bit better. Yeah. And I think it's just because, again, they started incorporating more electronic elements. They really utilized their DJ to, you know, his. Um, Uh, fullest capacity i felt Mm -hmm. and um again they just created stuff that at times did have kind of a deftonesy vibe to it as far as it being a little more atmospheric but then some songs just kicked you in the fucking face Mm -hmm. like uh lying uh my way from you oh my gosh that one the first time i ever heard that was on the radio 
it, when I was living in Texas, and it was this awful radio station out there that at the time was only really playing stuff like Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, which if you like that stuff, no problem. I'm cool with that. My wife loves that stuff. I'm not really a fan, but uh, when they first played that. that song, Lying My Way From You, I was like, whoa, who the fuck is that's this? A good, that's a really good track. Yeah. And I went back and I, I got Meteora, and talking about CD copying days, I got Meteora at my library, and I copied it on my computer Damn. and created a burned disc. I was Look like, holy you. shit, this is the best fucking library album I've ever gotten. Nice. And, uh, and then I went out to uh, Walmart, and I bought Meteora. and Allegedly. I, now he realized that he's no, admitting I, to pirating. I, I did. I did buy Meteor at this point, really. <laughs> uh, but I did buy Meteor at Walmart. I think I bought Breaking Benjamin's. Um, uh, what's the album with "So Cold" on it? I don't remember. God, this is just a whole episode I of s- I don't remember. I can see the um, the one with the, them covering their eyes and everything. It's a yeah. blue cover. Anyway, I bought those two albums at the same time, and I like Meteor a lot more. Um, Something light. I don't remember. I'll have to look up that, and then I'll have to look up the other Linkin Park album. But again, Meteora for me is my favorite Linkin Park album because it incorporates all of... It's really the best of all worlds for me. Yeah. And again, they went very, very pop and electronic in their newer stuff, Mm -hmm. which is fine. But for me, this is the perfect mixture of the the hard, heavy rock. Was it Faith on there? That's a pretty faint heavy was one. on the faint. Yes, yeah, that's faint. What it is. Faint was yeah, heavy. faint was fucking faint was great. Heavy. Faint and lying from you. And then uh, the opening track is heavy as fuck too. Um, I mean, just, like there's just so many great songs on that album. So uh, that that that's number five for me. I think that's yeah. I think a solid. Now the only reason why I have I have hybrid theory uh, for mine just because of the impact that it had. I totally agree with everything that you're saying. It's better songs, better quality, all that. But I can. Not many albums I can remember the exact moment I was. If, you know, if I can int- interrupt oh. for a minute, Thousand yeah. Sons, A Thousand Sons is that Linkin Park album, which oh, okay. I loved, but I digress. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, no worries. Um, I remember being in my friend's living room and it, uh, like MTV was on, you know, just casually. And I heard that riff one step closer. And mm. by this point, I had, you know, I'd established myself as loving Metallica and being a, a metalhead, you know, wearing, you know, the look, um, the look. And so did you, did you have the, of, did you have the, uh, the, the really big baggy? No, jeans I or, never did those. You didn't have I those? just wore like blue jeans and, and black t-shirts. What the fuck were those things called? Trap again? pants. <sighs> I feel like there was a better name for them. I don't Leave know. a comment goth, below. Goth pants. No, I was, I was a self. I would, um, how do I want to say this? I would, I was not, gothic i would tell you mm. people would always ask the questions i always got why do you wear black every day well because these are the bands that i like they make black t-shirts also black is very thinning as a pudgy middle school kid i was do anything i could to not be so uh fluffy mm-hmm. um what else oh I would, are you satanic no oh and that then, was always my favorite one <laughs> and then are you gothic and then you know i got those a lot so i got pretty good at answering those but no just black t-shirts and jeans and black vans um so pretty much what i wear today still but <laughs> no but I, I remember um so you know i was i was almost like an evangelist for rock and i was very quick to tell you how anything if it wasn't metallica or heavy it sucked and um I was very, you know, vocal about what I liked. And so I guess I felt the need to do that because if you turned on MTV or, you know, it it was uh, Country Grammar by Nelly was on, you know, it was uh, boy band era, Britney Mm. Spears, you know, it was like nothing that I listened to and it still isn't was ever pop culture. But still, even though I wanted to go against pop culture and and what I listened to, I still like had that desire to to see what I liked you know, on TV and stuff like that. And so when One Step Closer came on, and I remember that, like, the video shows, like, Chester, like, like just pans to his face. He opens his eyes or something, and he's got that bleach blonde spiked hair. Yep. Mike has the red hair. And, I mean, I just couldn't believe that there's these guys on, on TV, on MTV, that look like, you know, how I dressed and how my friends dressed. And 
man, that just blew up, right? I mean, everybody was all about some Linkin Park hybrid theory. And I also mm-hmm. remember um, and that I don't even remember how we would find a live version. I think you'd have to get on like, you know, this was the days that Napster was on its last leg. And so we were, we were uh, dodging viruses through LimeWire and BearShare and uh, <laughs> WinMX and I never did Kazaa. that. I mean, we were desperate. So, uh, I mean, I remember people having live videos of them playing and they were fucking awful live. I'm sure you can find on YouTube now, but just some of their first performances of that hybrid theory stuff, they were so tone deaf. I mean, it was cringy. It was Did you ever watch the DVD that they did in Texas? No. That was fucking great. I watched that one with a friend when Meteora came out. Well, so it I th- was so good. So I saw them after Meteora came out, uh, the Summer Sanitarium tour, of Metallica, Mudvayne, yeah. a very good uh, new metal. It was that tour. And, yeah, and they were great. So I guess they, you know, got their chops. I'm sure up. they were pretty green. I think it was like the guitar player's band. Like he was, he's the guy that produced. You know, he was like the brains behind it. From I don't know, I had heard somewhere, and that kind of got everybody else. And so I don't know if they were just new and nervous but um man i remember like it being really bad well as far as like particular songs off that album what are ones that really stuck out to you paper cut one step Mm. closer points of authority um in the end before it just totally got butchered (laughs) i guess by what i wanted to happen was them being you know on tv and radio well then they grabbed onto that power ballad-esque and anyways i loved um what was it? Was it Place for My Head? The one that opens up with like... Oh my God, I love that I remember I learned that on guitar. Same. I did too. And somebody thought that I was just like a guitar god because I could play Like I figured it out. I learned how to play that. I learned how to play Paper Cut. And I learned how to play One Step Closer, but I never felt like I was able to get it close enough. Yeah, kind of similar with Deftones... I guess once we get into Limp Biscuit, Lincoln Park, if it's got that electronic element, for some reason when I was learning riffs, it never jumped out to me as like, oh, I should learn this. I guess because the guitar isn't really the forefront. And so I don't know if it was just I couldn't hear it or I didn't, you know, just didn't sound like a good song to learn on guitar. Um, These kind of bands, I probably, if you looked at my catalog of like songs that I learned, I can probably count on one hand all of, all of the songs that I can play by these guys. So while they didn't really have maybe an influence on my me as a musician, at least not directly, I'm sure indirectly they, they absolutely did. Um, it wasn't, you know, I was just probably too busy learning Metallica songs. But um, I, I have mean, a, there's that from the top to the bottom, bottom to top. Stop. Yeah. I mean, I could sing every from single song. From the bottom to the bottom, from, bottom of the top, I stop. That's the cool. <laughs> I've forgotten in the middle of my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, and that was cool. Um, I didn't understand rap. Um, so when I could, you know, I, I um, admittedly, you know, some of these bands take a lot of shit. Um, if you admit liking them, Linkin Park being one of them, especially in the the metal community. But when we get to talking about Limp Biscuit too, I mean, that was fused with metal and hard rock. So, I mean, I could... I. I could kind of understand it a little bit more, but um, oddly enough, yeah. uh, just to wrap up the discussion with Lincoln Park, um, the first rock show I ever went to was a Lincoln Park concert. It was here, in, uh, it was in Charlotte, and it was Project Revolution tour. It was for their Minutes to Midnight album, and it was in like 2005. Was it the Sprite remix tour? Um, it was at Verizon or PNC. Yeah, I want to say yeah. it was. I want to say it was two. I think it was... Thousand, the, no, it was like 2006, 2007. No, really? Yeah, because mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. when that album came out. Okay. Um, and uh, it was them headlining, and then it was uh, My Chemical Romance, Mindless Self-Indulgence, and Placebo. And I remember going to that show. I still remember it. I remember I'd never heard anything that loud before. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, this is loud. And they fucking put on a great show. Like Chester was on fucking point RIP. Um, you know, he he always had to me an amazing voice, an even better scream, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And um like with Given Up when he did that song, he held that note out for as long as he did on the album. And I was like, oh my god. Which like, a lot I, of people don't do that, you know? I've never seen anything like that because a lot of the 
live uh, experience I had prior to that, the, the bands were just terrible live. Right. And that was the first time I really remember seeing a band that was just fucking on point the whole entire time. Nice. And uh, and it was also the very first time that I remember smelling weed, and there was a bunch of weed all around me because I went to my mom. My mom took me, me and my brother and a couple of friends, and uh, I was like, what the hell is that smell? She goes, that's weed. I'm like, that's weed? <laughs> I'm like, that shit s- smells like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Corey's first drug experience. I was just like, what the fuck? Really? Why would you smoke that? Anyway. Um, but yeah, that was, it was such a great experience. And uh, one, one I'll always hold on to. Cause again, a lot of people make fun of Lincoln park, but they, they always had a special place in my heart. So um, Lame. moving. You, uh, <laughs> well, now you want to know what my first concert was oddly enough. It was a, uh, new metal band, Static X. Oh, so that was not my first concert ever. That was my first rock concert. Well, this, we're we're this, not getting into first concert. This checks off both boxes. Oh, you're ago, lucky because so. I'm not going to mention what mine was. Maybe I will later. So, <laughs> also middle school again. I think it was in eighth grade, and Center City Fest was a thing. I don't know if it still is. It kind of re- got replaced by Speed Street. Okay, hold on. I will mention what my first show was. I was seven years old, and I went to go see In Sync. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, NSYNC's cool now, man. And it wasn't NSYNC. as cool because I think Lance Bass was sick or something, so it was just like the four of them or whatever, however many there are. Mm. And I was like, wow. It was Poor awful. Corey. I couldn't hear the music because it was just girls screaming the whole time. I was like, I'm never going to a concert again. This was terrible. At seven, I was like, this is terrible. I'm never going again. <laughs> anyway, a, Static good, X. Let's get back to Static good, X. It's good to know. Expl- bye, bye, explains bye. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Yeah, no, this was like, a, I don't know, probably $20 ticket. It was like a festival thing in, in downtown Charlotte. And nothing too big, just maybe a couple stages. But, you know, it was an eighth grader. I mean, that was, that was a pretty big deal. And the reason why I wanted to go was because... Damn, <laughs> we are fucking knocking them out here. This is going to be a long episode. You'll have to edit probably just for the YouTube video. Just like Just as soon as we say like the name of the albums, just be like, all right, next. Next. Oh and the core I've forgotten in the middle of my thoughts. Taken far from a safety. And why should I hear my memories of me? <laughs> it's so bad we can actually like sing the whole thing. Well, I mean, I guess it should be a surprise since we did dropping plates. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay, so um, um <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so yeah, Lincoln Park. It was you a know, f- festival. Yeah. So I I, mine was Lincoln Park. Yours was uh, Static, Static X. X. And the reason why I went was because Bush was going to be there. Oh. And I wanted to see. I want to see that's Bush. That's a weird. This, that's a weird. Well, it show. was like one of those weird things where the city puts it on, where it's like Speed Street. You know, Speed Street's oh, like okay. a. It's okay. three doors down every year. Or it used to be. Yeah, but Static X. And then like X? MC Hammer. Yeah. So Static. Wow. Yeah. So I wanted to see Bush. And so my, we weren't old enough to drive or go by ourselves. So my friend's dad, who played guitar, you know, took us, but he's really strict. And he kind of dropped us off at Static X, and he's like, all right, y'all watch him. I don't want to watch this shit. I'm going to go over here. And I just remember, like, being in that, that huge crowd for the first time, and I remember hearing them, you know, check uh, sound check and the drums, and I remember feeling that bass drum just, like, physically like hit my chest and man that was you know I was, I was hooked and i'd never maybe i knew push it maybe i remember yeah, the um I. the uh, queen of the damned had just come out oh, so yeah. that soundtrack was, was like was, the holy grail of like new metal songs yeah on that. and oh so so cold they played that one live and i mean i just really remember it you know i was i was 13 14 years old and static x was my first one but that's not the end of that show so we meet up. He was like, okay, come meet me after Static X is done. And, and Bush was going to be on the same stage. So he, while Bush was setting up, he made us go and watch Styx, the band, oh, with him. God. And it was fucking terrible. Now, I've, I can only imagine. I've seen Styx since then, and like I still don't really like them. I mean... I sailed away with them, but like that's about it, right? Um, <laughs> and Cartman doing that in South Park is the only reason why I would like sticks. But I, I, I remember like sitting in the gravel, like pouting, like throwing rocks because like Bush was playing and he wouldn't let us go. And then finally, I don't know if sticks ended. I don't know this is where my memory gets hazy. We walked back over 
and they started to play Come Down, which has that intro. And so what he uh, Gavin did was an extended intro with the guitar oh, okay. where he just like was holding like a note. And, you know, here I am, like, finally, like... You had your you know, time to run over there. And... W- well, to see a song for the first time that you recognize live is pretty powerful, too. And so they were about to play it, and my friend's dad goes, well, they're not going to play anything. Let's just go. And I'm just like, what the what? fuck? And we had to, like I said, oh he, he kind of had a temper. Like, I, you know, we were, we were kind of scared of him. Oh, geez. So, like, it was like, shit. Are you serious? And, you know, obviously I'm not saying that, but... uh that's how I felt. That's what you're thinking. And I remember walking back to his car, and you could still hear it. And I hear that. Dun, 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 dun. They went into wow. it as we get to the car, and I'm just like so mad. So, anyways. But Static X was the highlight, apparently, of that show. Yeah, Static X was good. So that was, uh, th- yeah, that was my first first concert and oh, first okay. new metal concert. So first time you're raged out at a concert, not even in the mosh pit. Just I remember on the way to the parking lot. <laughs> I remember being like, I saw the mosh pit, you know, like thinking it was just this, like, uh, you know, I mean, they are dangerous, but you know, like, I was so far away in the lawn of? that I couldn't even see. I saw like people moving it's in like a circle. It's like taboo almost, know. you know. It's like, oh, I saw the mosh pit, like you know, <laughs> I'll never get into one of those, you know. Oh, I was, oh, I was so close. I was, you know, that's that was kind of like how wow. how I was telling all my friends about it, you know, like. <laughs> I saw it, you know, not, oh yeah, I moshed around it the side. Yeah. No, it was terrifying. No, it was like a hundred feet away, man. I was really close, oh you know. Oh my God. Kind of it, so. so what do you have uh, next here? Because I, I, I was the last one talking about Meteora and then, uh, or you talked about hybrid theory. Yeah, so you go. So, um, okay, well, up next from Meteora. This one I kind of struggled with a little bit because technically they are, in my mind, kind of like one of the forefathers of what new metal or rap rock or whatever ended up becoming. Um, it's got to so be Rage. I'm throwing them in there, Rage. And for me, the album for me that um, was my favorite and that resonated with me the most was uh, Battle for L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, that album just front to back. I remember when I got it, <laughs> funny story, I didn't know at the time, and I've made a video about this before. I didn't know that uh, Audio Slave and Rage Against the Machine had a connection. <laughs> I had no clue because I had heard oh, Audio man. Slave before Rage. I went back and got into Rage. That's funny. And when I um, when I picked up Battle for LA, I was like, "Wow, this sounds really fucking good! Like, this is awesome! I love this. <laughs> the guitar sounds really similar to Audio Slave." That's and I looked awesome. at the back. I'm like, "Oh my god, that's yeah, that's Tom Morello." I'm like, "Wait, which came first? So I went back and I went back and listened to all their albums, but um, for me, Battle for LA was the one that, again, got me the most. I was like, damn, this thing is fucking epic. Got to like, testify, m- man. Made me want to fucking rage out in the streets, dude. I was just like, hell yeah, fuck the man. Because this is, again, around the time, now I'm really dating myself, and you're going to be able to figure out how old I am. I got in around the time that like George Bush was president. So I was just like, already like, yeah, that guy's an asshole. And this music's fucking awesome. I just want to... Fight the system, man. Fuck it. This is testify. Bullshit. Testify. Yeah, that re- Gorilla Radio. <laughs> See, that was another good. Um, I remember th- I didn't absorb that album as a whole, but the singles for sure. Testify, Gorilla Radio. And those, again, were visible on TV. Uh, they played VMAs. S- uh, Sleep Now in the Fire as well. They played oh, that yeah, one yeah, live yeah. as well. And I remember. Uh, they lost to Limp Biscuit, I think, for best video or perf- metal yeah, performance. Yeah, and, their and bass the bass player, player climbs. Flipped out. Yeah, he climbed the like. Uh, well, the they decorations would do, do protest the shows. They would fucking show up buck ass naked and just stand on the stage and not play. Like they did a I lot just, of crazy. I just shit. remember watching him climb that thing and just sway at the top because they because they lost out. But yeah, that album for me was huge for me, and again, it it inspired me a lot when growing up and. God, I learned so many of those songs on guitar. A lot of the songs I learned how to play on guitar were Tom Morello songs, whether they were Audio Slave or Rage. And I'm sure I pissed my parents off just playing that riff, that one riff for Sleep Now in the Fire over and over and over again in my room. Like I would rewind the song back so I could hear it right. And I'd have my guitar tablature on my computer and I'd try to play it. And eventually I'd just. You know how I know you're a singer? How's that? Because you called it tablature. 
Oh, is, oh it's just tabs? <laughs> no, you can call it whatever you want. Yeah, that's exactly what... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Um, this is going to be edited out. <laughs> I remember, no, it's not. I remember uh, to share a little bit more of my wardrobe. I had a Rage shirt that I got at Hot Topic. Um, it was black, and it had a square, a red square. It was solid. And then I think it must have said Rage in black letters, maybe. I don't know. Inside the Did box, Did you actually listen to Rage when you bought the shirt? Or were you one of, like one of those kids nowadays that just buys a shirt and is like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck this is? No, I was definitely... I was representing... Name a song from that band and I'll give you an A+. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> they can't do it. <laughs> they um, can't. <laughs> I'll no, give you $5. I, I, was, I was proudly representing my musical tastes right in my clothing. Um, and I remember it had the quote from Gorilla Radio. Nice. You know, that has to start somewhere. It has to start sometime. What better place in here? What better what time, better than, time than, than And now. then all hell breaks loose. And it said hell on it. And I thought it was so cool. Damn. And like getting away with it, like wearing a, a cuss word to school because it'd be like on the back, you know? Ooh. And so. Um, Falling hard. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So that's that's for that's that's my next pick. Absolutely. I in this put, almost hour long episode of. I put rage in there. We're not even done. Yeah. Um. So I would have to put the most hated band of all time. Oh, I mean, boy. Here I, it goes. Here it goes. I like Limp Biscuit. <clears throat> there. I said it. What can I say? I know you're back in Chainsaw. <laughs> what? Skin your ass, bro. I remember, you know, <laughs> like, um, again, similar to all these other bands, I didn't get into them about, you know, the third album or so. Don't know if $3 Bill Y'all was the first, first mainstream one, but... uh I remember, you know, Nookie, of course, all that. But I guess it wasn't until Roland came out on MTV. On t- I was watching TRL a lot, even though I had to sit through a lot of boy bands and Britney Spears, which I, 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 I ended up really, you know, I can sing every word to all those Britney Spears I, songs. I would watch but, uh, Fuse because they would play more stuff like this. I well, wouldn't watch any of the other I stuff. I didn't have MTV2 at this uh, point. I don't even know if digital cable was a thing, Corey. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so Stupid kids. But um, I remember seeing the video for Roland, and just, again, as a kid that just did not find rap accessible or just not wanting to like it because I was, a, a you know, I liked rock music. I loved Limp Biscuit when they came out with that video. I thought it was so cool. And I remember not understanding how singles worked, so I went to Best Buy immediately and was looking for Roland on the backs of their albums. So I'm sitting there looking at $3 bill, y'all. Uh huh. I didn't see it. I'm looking at the <laughs> back of uh, Significant Other. Excuse I me, sir. I would it. like the Roland album, please. <laughs> like, well, I just didn't. I was give me I, the Roland CD. I didn't understand that singles would be released before the album. You know what I mean? So I was like, seriously, probably in Best Buy for who knows how long, just thinking that they were out. And, and then I guess I finally learned that the it was going to be on their new album, and, and they had to release it. But um, yeah, I love. Chocolate Starfish and Hot Dog Flavored Water, man. So Chocolate Starfish was like two out. Al- it was two albums in. So it was their third album that they yep. put out. Yeah, and that one had a lot of filler stuff. You know, they 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 have some weird B tracks that definitely I skipped for sure. But mm-hmm. um, I don't know. It was just fun. I guess that's all that I can really say. I mean, it's they're stupid, they're silly, but it's heavy. It was energetic. Um, you know, he's always always wanting to bring that beat back. You know. Uh, and then builds up to it, and then all of a sudden it's back, and before I know it, it's it's like they were notorious for, like, a Wes would play the riff real quiet, kind of like in Break Stuff, and you don't even realize this happened, and then they build it up, and then all of a sudden it's just, like, comes in super loud with the same riff, but it just sounds so much heavier and loud. So I, I, I was never, never into Limp Biscuit, But I will say, I think... Like Wes Borland, he's he's a fantastic guitar player, in my opinion. He's easily mm-hmm. one of the better guitar-players from that era of of like new metal. Like he I just never got he, the same came, he came up with just some really fucking memorable sounding riffs. And yep. I always remember list whenever I would hear Limp Biscuit played, I'd be like, Man, this guitar riff is fucking awesome. And here come those stupid vocals. Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that was just me, because again, it just it never resonated with me, but well, I wasn't I wasn't the audience for it, I guess. So. Yeah, and I guess being from North Carolina, Fred Durst, it was always kind of cool to know that he was from North Carolina, even though everybody always has something bad to say about He's from Jacksonville, isn't he? I think 
think he's yeah, from. or I think a lot of people say he's from Shelby, but he says Jacksonville. But he, um, well, Wikipedia says Jacksonville. Yeah, but I think well, it says Jackson. Well, it takes you a little link of Jacksonville, Florida. No, nah, he's definitely from North Carolina. But I got Wikipedia sh- again. I think, he, I think he grew up in Shelby, though. Oh but, wow! Uh, I don't. Yeah, but um, some tra- So generation, my generation, hot dog was great, right? He says fuck forty three times in that song, right? Uh, the Mission Impossible soundtrack. Take a look around. Again, it was great. Not, Rowan was good. Not my bag. <laughs> um, Boiler was good. I don't know. I gotta say. Okay. Now, I did buy the album that Wes wasn't on, and when I saw them live with Metallica, that was that was when they toured. So I actually didn't get to see Wes. The one that they did behind Blue Eyes on, and but um, I didn't. I don't really listen to him anymore. I yeah. Haven't, <clears throat> I haven't really. F- felt like I need to pick up a new Limp Biscuit album. So I, I'm comfortable leaving them where they are. Look, this hour long discussion so. is just gonna bring back all that nostalgia and you're gonna want to visit it on the ride home. Well I just did, watch. probably I did notice that playing um at Ricky Jay's, which you've got some experience oh, soon. Ricky Jay's is just this really uh or probably well, I don't even know if it's around anymore. It's really dive bar. I don't but even my know old if band it's around anymore. I don't know either. But we would play covers there and boy we'd play we'd we'd uh uh, we break out, break stuff, right? Oh and jeez, I don't really have much room like to criticize. Three of the just most like, I don't know. I always called it the uh, straight out of prison bar. I used but to. <laughs> we used to, uh, one of my old bands rage when we played that. We used to do a very rap rock, new metally version of straight out of Compton there, and they would lose their shit. And I feel very. Um, a shame that I was a part of such uh, performances, but that and killing in the name would just bring out. Oh yeah, the, oh the worst and people, man, they would come right up to the fr- front and just start just trying to mosh. Nothing like oh. a bunch of rednecks singing along to rage. Yeah. So, so uh, for me, the next one I have on my list is System of a Down, and I f- was fighting with myself here on whether I was going to put Toxicity mm-hmm. down. Or if I was going to put their self-titled album down, I went with their self-titled. Um, Why? I, you know, I think it was just more. It, it was more transformative for me when I first heard it, and still to this day, I really enjoy it. There's a very like I, I'm not really that big into punk or hardcore, but it definitely has at times a very punk rock hardcore vibe to it, and it. To me, it still works really well, and I think toxicity production-wise, and even some of the way the songs are composed, I think that they're better. But I always go back and listen to that first album because it's just so aggressive. Yeah, and I remember I bought that album when I was I was on vacation with my family in Florida, and I went to a Virgin Records store at downtown Disney. That's where I would go and get a lot of like the albums that I couldn't find anywhere. Like there would be a lot of specialty albums that would be there that I couldn't find at target or I couldn't find at a Walmart or a or FYE or whatever. Cause FYE used to have a lot of good stuff, but the FYE near me was really expensive. Oh, they, Virgin records was no. a lot cheaper. So I was like, I'll go there. They definitely were. They were always like 1999 where best yeah. buy, they'd be like 1299. Yeah. Yeah. But they always had a good, I, well, and I never had, I never had a best buy near me. So, but anyway, so that's where I would go and get a lot of my stuff. And I got that album and I know I had heard sugar off iTunes before that. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, fuck, this song is great. It's so wow. stupid. iTunes, God, it's man. Napster. Well, again, I, I, I bought all my too. stuff. I, I the only stuff I would steal from was the library. It wasn't even an iTunes. Like iTunes wasn't even a thing. I just remember that being one that my brother and sister downloaded and just being the weirdest fucking song I'd ever heard in my life. Sugar. Yeah. 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 I, I thought it was the weirdest thing I'd ever heard as well. Like, I, I honestly can say I've, I don't think I'd ever heard anything that off the wall strange. Mm-hmm. Um, now in hindsight, like it very much has like at times almost like a lot of their stuff has like a Frank Zappa kind of like vibe about it, which you could tell they were really inspired by a lot of weird psychedelic bands. Um, probably cause they were fucking high as balls on <laughs> all their albums. Um, but again, that album for me, I just, I really like the energy on it. I love how raw it sounds. I love how heavy it is, how aggressive it is. And 
it took me a while to realize that there was a lot of songs that had a lot of like um, political and social messages woven into the fabric of the material. And I knew that Toxicity had a lot of that because it was very upfront about it. Mm-hmm. But that album, again, some of it was like, I don't know what the fuck this is about. And then reading into more about what Pluck is about, I was like, oh my God, this song's about the Armenian genocide. I was like, what the fuck is that? And that led me right. down a rabbit hole of learning about that. I ended up writing about that shit in college and doing research papers. And, you know, that all started from this band. Mm-hmm. It really um, it also inspired me to sing in a way that was really unorthodox at times with a lot of vibrato. You know, whenever I sing, um, a lot of people immediately latch on to, oh, you sound like Maynard from Tool. I hadn't listened to Tool until I was 20. I, I'd never touched Tool. It was guys like David Draymond and Serge Tankian that made me go, I want to sing like that. Right. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, this album just it fucking had a huge impact on me. It was fucking great. I fucking love that album so much. Nice. So. But uh, yeah, what do you, what do you have um, next here? I don't want to get into a discussion, but Toxicity was my like while Sugar was my first exposure to System of a Down. Toxicity was uh, I didn't get into that even until later. I was probably well into high school before I started listening to them, and then Mesmerize came out, and uh, I was listening to that. But so I have four more, and I think we share the same. The same one mm-hmm. for one of them, maybe. Let me peek at your list. Oh, you're going to look at my oh, list? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right, so technically, I only have three unique ones. So we can kind of talk about them real quick. Yeah. Um, Papa Roach, man. Infest. Got my life yes. in two pieces. Right, man. <laughs> I'm, the music video. We were talking about this the other day, I feel like, with the white. We were. I don't remember where we were. We were talking about it. Were we at working at Amos's? Maybe we were the white tile. It was either that, that or it Neil was, was around. I remember. So oh no, it was your it was your bachelor party. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, and the uh, the crowd being below them, the, the illuminated fish white eye floor. lens yeah. that they had looking mm-hmm. down at everybody, going uh, showing people doing drugs or think you know making questionable life decisions, thinking about killing themselves and all that other stuff. Yeah, and um, I don't know, man, that album. That one started off as a a single that ended up, you know, I got the album and really, really liked it. Um, this is when I started interacting with people that played guitar and bass and stuff like that. And I remember this one kid played bass and I went over to his house and he like played through a lot of these tracks and that really made me want to play guitar. But, um, you know, I don't think I ever got to suit um, Papa Roach, but I, I, they were very present on MTV. I remember they did a, a VMA performance like on the balcony of uh, Radio City Music Hall, and they did Last Resort and my other favorite, Broken Home. I remember that too. And man, they were just great. I mean, they just like did it up. I mean, it was a great show. And um, I remember uh, my parents got divorced, I guess, probably, you know, around this time, a lot of preteen and teen angst, you know, and. Uh, I used to like play broken home. Like I thought that like, you know, my house is not a broken home at all, but I used to be like, you know, (laughs) parents are getting divorced. I'm just going to play this like really loud. And I mean, while it sucked, like, I mean, going through a divorce, it was by no means was I experiencing any hardship aside from just your parents splitting up. You know what I mean? But I, I, you know, I felt the need to, to blast that. A lot of these, Albums and songs did the same thing for me, too, because, again, I had a really great, you know, childhood growing up. I mean, I, I didn't have any adversity or problems or anything like that, really. I, I mean, I, really until I really discovered that I did have depression, and that kind of was probably the reason why a lot of this stuff resonated with me the way it did, because mm-hmm. I was like, well, my life's pretty good. I got a, I got a lot of good shit going on, but why do I always feel so sad and this music made me feel like, you know, I, I felt pretty connected to something. Like, I was like, oh, well, these people sometimes feel like that, so maybe it's just normal. I guess I'll just, you know, try to keep pushing through it. And it's the same kind of thing, you know. Mm. I'm sure my parents would be like, why the Dude, hell is he playing that depressing shit again in I this don't, room? I probably <laughs> worried my family to death because, I mean, I listened to some 
fucked up shit thinking about it, but I never listened to lyrics. I mean, well, my dad, when he first heard me listening to metal stuff, I think he said something to the effect of like, why is he listening to that weird devil shit? Yeah. And my mom's like, it's whatever. Just, just, just a just, phase. Just a fa- well, not even that it's just a phase. And she goes, he's not hurting anybody. He's not hurting himself. He's just exploring. Let him explore. Yeah. And they were pretty cool about that. And I always will be thankful that they did that and let me explore. Because, yeah. I mean, a lot of that stuff really helped me as a kid, you know? Right, yeah. Even absolutely. to this day. Well, you know, I always, I think when I listen to music, I'd listen to sounds, you know, like in the feeling over what is the person, you know, what are the lyrics actually saying? Because, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I would listen to. And even to this day, I'm always discovering, wow, I used to listen to that in middle school. And it's like, you know, I didn't know the meaning of it or I never listened to it or it just, I never bothered to pay attention to it. But, um, you know, I, I, I just like the way this stuff sounded and, yeah, the way it made me feel. And I like heavy guitars, Um and so this was the stuff, this is where you get it. This is kind of the same thing with metal when people are like, how do you stand those, the screaming or the growling? And I'm like, well, I didn't, I didn't love it. You know, I've just gotten used to it because I want to hear this badass solo or this badass guitar or this 10 minute track with all these acoustic parts. And, you know, you don't get that anywhere else. So it's like, I kind of just had to learn to like the vocals I didn't like that stuff either at first until I realized why it was being utilized. It it clicked with me that I, you know, listening to so many of these bands and then listening to interviews with them, they talked about how really it's just trying to, it's really like painting just with different colors to kind of yeah. help express what's going on in the music, you know, the best way that they could possibly do that. And, you know, just it's like cooking a fine dish. Sometimes you got to throw in some... You know, you got to throw in some salt and pepper and then you throw in a little bit of, you know, I don't know, garlic. And then, you know, you try to add something to complement that, you know, that is a little bit more sweet or whatever. You throw some brown sugar in there. You got, you know, that savory kind of like it always looked at it like that of like, OK, I get it. At first I was like, I don't know if I like this that much. And then I was like, oh, wait, I get it. It's it's just like watching a monster movie or a horror movie. Sometimes you have to have those really scary things to kind of like bring the whole message home mm-hmm. and then you just get used to it yeah absolutely and, and, then, and again for and you kind of start to like it i think for me too growing up i always loved playing pretend and pretending i was a monster or a superhero or whatever so for me it was kind of like that too i was like oh well these guys aren't actually like this in their everyday life they're not walking around you know doing guttural growls or screams or whatever <laughs> you know like that's just something it's an act they're putting on to kind of enhance the experience and i was like oh i like that i can do that too really? so but yeah, I, I definitely feel you there on just like how some of these songs and these albums can elicit so much. And again, maybe it's just because we grew up with it. Yeah, and well, none of and everything we kind of listed like they never really get past like a a yell. You know what I mean? So I hadn't really made that step into the the growls yet. But vocally, it was all pretty pleasing to listen to, and, and it complemented distorted guitars pretty well. But um, yeah. Got their got or uh, Papa Roach on there. Cool, yeah. I've got uh, for me next. I have, I have the sickness by disturbing. I have the sickness on here too, and I knew that was gonna happen. Yeah. Well, when we can straight up acapella <laughs> dropping plates. I may have been really without any. I don't know if I'm ashamed of that or really proud. of I'm that. really proud of that. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but no, that that album for me was the first. It was the first metal album period that i ever got um and again stupefy first song i ever heard from disturbed was the game and it was oh, nice. on that dragon ball z vhs tape that i had and i just remember hearing that whole like rah, rah, like i was like what the fuck is that that is so cool like right. as a kid i'm just like that is the coolest thing i've ever heard because yeah. it's happening while these guys are all flying around punching each other in the face i'm just like yeah, I just felt amped up. And uh, I didn't really put two and two together for quite a while because I, God, I think I was like 12 or something when I heard that. Mm-hmm. And then when I was 13, I figured out who Disturbed was. It was like a whole year after. I figured out that, oh, that's the band that was on that Dragon Ball Z movie. Oh, okay. 
and I asked my parents, I was like, hey, I know what I want for Christmas. I want this album by Disturbed. It's called The Sickness. And I don't know. I think you can get it wherever, Target or Walmart or whatever. And they were like, okay, sure, we'll get that for you. How'd they like that cover? They didn't know what the fuck it was. I don't still don't know what they it had is. No, I, I, I don't, yeah, it's... Some dude wrapped up in some sort of uh, foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say straight jacket, but foreskin works always, as well, I guess. Yeah, it always reminded me of that. Um, oh my god! Because there's like an extra layer of something. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. It kind of always reminded me of like the caterpillar from like Alice in Wonderland or some weird yeah. crap like that. That's pretty consistent. With, uh, um, <laughs> look at this now. But. Um, no, they got me that album, and I was so excited when I opened that thing up, and I threw it into my little portable CD player, had my headphones on, I'm and listening it, to it. And it broke. It didn't break, but the album, what I thought happened was the album was skipping. I was like, why does it sound like this album skipping? You got the edited version. My parents got me the edited version from Walmart, because they didn't know the difference. And yeah, that, that image does look like it's foreskin around that guy's Told face. you. That's, yeah. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking there. I don't either. Um, <laughs> it doesn't even, it looks too fleshy to be a, sp- a straight jacket. Maybe it's supposed to be like some sort of like, he's in a, he's a tumor or something. He's, well, that's why I always thought it was, I always thought it was like, like that. extra layer of skin and it always made me uncomfortable. On next week's episode of the breakdown channel, we're going to talk about album covers and <laughs> mm. <laughs> talk about the, Talk about the meaning behind the foreskin man. I wonder on, if they have like the original on the sickness album. Uh, but now again, th- they got me the clean version. I was like, uh, all right, well, I guess this will work. But I still, I still have that album, um, and I listen to it so many times. I'm sure it's scratched to hell. I listen to that thing so much. The the edited one. The edited one. I, so you didn't know that your mommy wasn't supposed to do it again. No, I I eventually figured that out. I mentioned it figured out all the parts that had all the, the cussing in it. I was like, oh, that's what they're saying there. Uh, but I didn't really care either because, again, the guitars were fucking heavy. The vocals were just, like, intense. And I thought they were the coolest thing ever I had, you know, that I had ever heard at the time. So I, I didn't really care either way. But, um, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a number two for me. Well... Man, this I remember Stupefy being the first one that uh, that I heard, and I don't think I liked it that much. I thought the guitar was always kind of weird with that intro, um, and I didn't understand what he was saying. Oh, I didn't know what the hell he was saying. He's like, I waited in my life, whole life for just, just one. What's, and what's funny just, is except like except for the, the can't give a won't give a fuck. That's the only one that I'm, I'm confident. What's funny is the clean version. Like they still have him saying that on there because the way he would say it, it sounded like he was just going. Rah. Is he saying fuck in he's all saying those? Fuck in all those. No. That's how he got away with doing that. So I still heard that on the clean version. So it didn't bother me. I was like, oh, wow. This is really, and then and then the rest of the songs didn't have cussing on. I was like, this is really confusing. That well, song the, has it, but the others don't. The only one's obvious. Is, he says, "I won't give a," and then he says, "Fuck." I guess all I wanted was just one. Fuck one tiny little innocent. Fuck. And I want to feel like, like I'm shit out of luck. luck. That's luck. See, yeah. so that's what. Anyways, so I thought that was kind of weird, um, and then. You know, front to back, I ended up really liking this album. But um, I, even to this day, I'm sure now more than ever, but being a fan of the band and loving that, I would always get uncomfortable listening to The Sickness with people, the unedited version. I hated that fucking I, I'm going to admit I never played that in front of my parents. Well, not even parents. So I can I mean, imagine what they would have yeah. fucking heard. Or well, you'd be in the car and somebody, and what's funny is like a lot of friends would be like, you know, they'd, <laughs> they'd be like, oh, yeah, let's play this part. And I was just like, why the fuck would you want to play this in front of anybody? Like, it's, it, it, I got like secondhand embarrassment listening to David Draymond complain about, you know, his mom. But he part. wasn't, compl- as he explained later, he wasn't complaining about his mom. He was looking at it from like mother society. He looked at society as like the mother, the caretaker, the one that, was well, setting all the rules for how people had to live their lives. I'll be was, a good boy. Yeah. Well, I'll be a good boy. 
Oh, so awkward, Very dude. cringy. Oh, I just have to hit me like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're hurting me. That's like the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Why did you hit me like that, mommy? I, oh, just, God. <laughs> I don't know. Take that out, and it's damn near perfect for what it is, that album. I love it, though, man. Yeah, the game is good. Um, Did you ever see them live? Yeah, I saw them at a, an OzFest. Don't really remember too much. I think it was 05. Okay. I saw them with Korn, Chevelle. I saw them. I think Black Label Society or Ozzy was there with Zach Wild. Oh, so you saw them deaf. for like the Believe album, mm-hmm. or no, uh, Ten Thousand Fists, I believe. No, it was Believe. I think it was the last one that came out. Because Believe came out in like two thousand two or two thousand three. Yeah, it was probably it was for that for sure. I saw them on their Asylum tour. It was them with Avenged Sevenfold and Stone Sour. It was a fucking great show. Nice. And they had this giant, like, monitor thing that had all of these like animated clips playing, and it was fucking great. Yeah, great show. And unfortunately, like, I think I want to say it was like five shows into that tour, David Draymond blew out his vocal cord completely. Mm. He had to, they had to stop for a while. He had to get surgery done. But um, but it was a great, sh- great show, great tour. That was, uh, it was the. Asylum tour, and then Avenged Sevenfold was playing their Nightmare album. So it was right. Oh, cool! When, it was right after the Rev died, mm. um, and then Audio Secrecy was the album that Stone Sour had put out. So it was a great show. It sounds like it'd be really um, good. And again, everything they played off the sickness sounded great and translated fantastically live. So, but uh, yeah, so uh, so w- I I have my last one here. Do you have? Uh, I've got two more. You got two more. I'll it's let you. I'll, I'll let you right. go. Um, man, I guess new metal would would be where to put these guys. But stained. You ever listen to stained? I listen to a lot of stained. God. I listen to some of their later stuff though. Like I listen to. Uh, so here's where well, I mean I listen. To, obviously, like, it's been a while and outside so and break then the mud cycle. shovel. Right. I, I really listened to singles from Stain. I didn't ever listen to uh, full Man. albums. Well, I'm the same way except for Break the Cycle. My brother got me into Stain, and he had Dysfunction, Dysfunctional, whatever, the one with the clown with Mud Shovel. Yeah. And then they have some kind of like unreleased, like there was always this rumored album called like Torment or Tormented or something, but it had like a picture of like, I always heard the rumor. Again, this is great talking about this stuff because this was like, the Little birth of the internet. Yeah, I mean, nobody, you couldn't look this stuff up. And so, the, like, Fred Durst discovered Aaron Lewis, you know, and their album had, like, a cross, like, upside down or something. It was, like... Yeah, Tormented, 1996. Yeah. It was apparently, right there, like... There it is. There it is, yeah, cross, and, like, apparently Fred Durst is, like, fuck this shit, man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, and, like, didn't like it. I, I don't think that's how he speaks when he's oh, just well. having conversations. But, but. um... I think, didn't we talk so, about that? Not all these people sound the same when they're singing <laughs> as when they're talking. <laughs> he had those songs downloaded, and you know, I didn't, I didn't really listen to him that much. Maybe not even Mud Shovel, but again, MTV man, TRL, outside with Fred Durst, Family Values tour ninety nine or ninety seven, whatever, and uh-huh. they sat on the steps and he played outside on his acoustic. That was a really powerful performance for me. I mean, that was great. I love that. And um, they ended up putting that on this album. And yeah, front to back, man. I've I've listened to this, and they did a um, a cool. They brought back MTV Unplugged on MTV Two, and they did a session, and they played a lot of these tracks on it. On uh, just acoustic setting and it translated really good. I saw them around the same time as that Ozfest. Saw them live and it, I think it was the f- 13, 14 Shades of Grey, thirteen Shades of Grey. I don't know album and but um. I think that was uh, yeah fourteen. So 14 but they, they played shades. a lot of Break the Cycle. But I, yeah, I loved uh, Open Up Your Eyes about. Uh, I did have their uh, Chapter Five album. Oh yeah, it sucked. It was like I was like, this is well, really boring. The thing is, he had a kid for the 14 shades of gray and he got happy and all their shit sucked. And then he got real conservative and real pissed off and real redneck country. Oh yeah. This and still is. Yeah, still is. And they released that self-titled album. That shit oh, yeah. wails, dude. That's yeah. a great album. It was like 2011. I think yeah. I was. saw him at rebellion and he yeah, was cranky and upset about girls crowd surfing and gave a PSA about it. 
I have seen that video. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and um, apparently he did it like at every show. I think, but oh, um, that takes away the impact. What the hell? Unless you saw it at the Rebe- the Rebellion one, because I was there. I think it was that video. Yeah. I saw it on. on he was online. like, "You should all be ashamed of yourselves." <laughs> grabbing these people shit yeah um but uh yeah fade that album and open up your eyes about how your daughter could be a prostitute and you know just like all this shit that's going on and you know i thought that as a middle schooler that was really uh you know i was like man i need to open up your eyes look at how the i gotta respect women man this is this could be you you know you take everything for granted and all that and then fade was really good he was just pissed off and that was you know i did listen to the lyrics on this one and um uh for you was always good i mean he always liked to say fuck and i thought that was cool and then i remember the that song waste towards the end of it um i don't know man he was just intense and very sad you know and i i i liked that i liked uh, i could feel his emotion in that album and couldn't really win any of the subsequent ones, but yeah, I like break the cycle a lot. Still do. All right, cool. All right. Well, I guess I'll give my last one and then I'll let you give your last one. Cool. Um, for me, uh, my number one favorite new metal album is Slipknot's Iowa. So you, okay. So we didn't talk about Iowa. We didn't, we talked about volume three. But we talked about gotcha. how the first song, the first time, the first time I ever heard Slipknot was Heretic Anthem, okay, which is off of Iowa. But I went back after after I'd it's gotten very volume, confusing delivery, Corey. I know, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's like Memento; everything's all <laughs> <laughs> happening in the wrong order. That's how my brain works, anyway. Um, but no, I I got in Volume Three, and then I went back, and I listened to their first album. And it was, I liked it, but I don't know. There was just something about it to me that it just seemed too chaotic. Yeah. And I can can see that for sure. It definitely just like, like I thought six sounded cool. Spit it out was good. Wait and bleed. I loved, I would sing along to that song all the time. I loved that song so much. Um, But there was just this, it was just a little too chaotic for me and a little too, I don't know. It just it, there wasn't enough there that kind of felt like it was cohesive. It definitely felt like a first album to me, even though I know technically it wasn't like their very very first album, but it was the first album with Corey Taylor as their singer. Um, but then after that, I got Iowa, and I had remembered that Heretic Anthem was off of Iowa, and this was when I was a little older. So my parents really didn't care what I was listening to at this time. And I didn't really have to hide the fact that I loved heavy metal and all this stuff, which I never really did. I thought I had to be, you know, a little cautious with it. But um, when I picked up this album, I had never heard anything that heavy before. Still is so heavy. It is fucking gnarly. The first time I heard people equal shit, I was just floored. I was like, Oh, this thing is just nasty. Yeah. It is just brutal. And even that like opening intro thing they have of just I think it was their DJ Sid screaming in the vocal booth. It was like after his grandfather had died and they threw him in the vocal booth and he's just sitting in there screaming and he's crying in the vocal booth. And they go right into people equal shit. I was just like, "Whoa, oh my god, this is just just devastatingly heavy." Mm-hmm. And then obviously they got songs like Disaster Piece which was just incredibly dark and fucked up and i mean it felt like you were watching a a fucking serial killer film and uh and then obviously heretic anthem which you know i just i loved it because it was dabbling into the whole like ooh, this is evil kind of thing like ooh, this is creepy right um so obviously heretic anthem and then left behind left behind for me kind of had that similar vibe that Wait and Bleed had. It wasn't as catchy, but it still was a really good hooky song that proved to me that they were really to, able to do whatever they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. The people just had to get the fuck out of their way because they were just going to create whatever they wanted. And uh, yeah, man, just front to back, that album is just so brutal. And it, I think really for me, that was the first time I was really introduced to anything that had elements of like death metal in it. And I mean, again, at times it went into straight up, you know, almost grindcore kind of uh, inspired sections, which I didn't know what the fuck any of that stuff was back then. Yeah. And, and again, the, and the, um, as far as the vocals are concerned, 
like those vocals that Corey Taylor was able to create were just otherworldly. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there's no one really doing that. I don't know what demon crawled up his ass and just fucking started screaming like that. But again, it was so throaty. It was so like it sounded like it hurt. It sounded just. It sounded full. It just it. I don't know, man. It just resonated with me so much. And it was that album that I realized that, you know, because I, I really, I always really loved to sing, but I never liked putting it out there that I liked to sing and that I liked to play music. Especially I liked to sing because in my mind, singing was kind of this like effeminate thing. It was a little wimpy you know, singing was a wimpy thing to do. I don't know if it was just the music I was surrounded by, you know, with like friends, they were listening to pop stuff and everything was all about love and blah, blah, blah. For me, I was just like, this is, this is, this is just too feminine. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be like that. And when I heard that, I was like, there's nothing lame or like too touchy feely or effeminate or anything like that. This dude sounded like he had balls. Is this that, dude resonated with me. I was like, that's how I want. I want to fucking sing like that dude. That dude is just fucking hard. Is that, when you, is that when you push your fingers into your eyes? <laughs> that's volume three. That's volume three. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little... duality. I'm a little out of order. Yeah. <laughs> that was beforehand. Damn. I loved his voice on that album too, but this one... It almost sounded like a completely different singer because of the way he switched up his vocals. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was number one for me. I don't know how to follow up to that because I did mine out of order. Okay. Well, what do you have left then that you would like to highlight? Pretty big one. Godsmack. And I'm not the one <laughs> so oh, man. Fall away. Dude, <laughs> nothing else like it, man. So I would have to say they're first three the self-titled awake and faceless are all up there Uh, i think i ended up probably liking faceless the most because i saw them open up for metallica on that tour and they fucking wailed dude they were so good and that just stayed with me but um yeah here in voodoo i think whatever might have been the first godsmack song i ever heard Mm -hmm. and just hearing them better fucking go away you know i mean just like like, what is this, and how do I get more of it? Um, and I thought on that self-titled like Moon Baby. No, you know what? I think the first one I heard was Awake. I think it, I think I had to go back and check out the self-titled. Um, but I think they were part of the. You know, they were visible on MTV as well, and they had a video for Awake. Um, and yeah, man, it's funny is I played on a baseball team and I was like, it was the last time I played baseball. So it was like 15 and I remember a bunch of us in the dugout were singing voodoo <laughs> one time when we were just, we were waiting to get up to bat and we're just like, I'm not the one. <laughs> we have one guy doing like the, the like little do, bongo drum. Do, 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 <laughs> oh. Because I told them, I was like, oh, what, they're like, what kind of music do you listen to? I'm like, oh, I like metal. They're like, you let's sing voodoo. They're like, you like Godsmack? I'm like, I'm not the one who's so <laughs> oh my far God. away. What That's what I'm going to start doing now. <laughs> I'm just like, going to yeah! start singing voodoo. <laughs> I remember, I guess my brother started to get off of the heavy music and was like very upset at the name and stuff like that. The like Godsmack? People, yeah, people would, would think that voodoo was like devil worshiping oh, and stuff. Oh, oh, poor baby. I know. <laughs> Um, but it's funny because they just ripped it off from an Alice in Chains song. Which song is that? Godsmack. Which album is that off of? Dirt. Oh shit! That's where that's where they got it from. Yeah. I I never put that. I never put two and two together there. Holy crap! Yeah, it's a, it's not a real popular song. Um, but uh, <laughs> I didn't know that that's where they got. I it have from. this DVD of like bootleg stuff. It's like official by them. It's called Smack This, and it's not concert footage. It's like behind the scenes stuff, which is not what I wanted. I wanted fucking concert footage, so maybe I should. I don't even know if I still have it, but I should look. And uh, the bass player is like wasted, hungover, probably a little bit of both, like eating a salad like on tour at this like restaurant with like sunglasses on. 
And it's just like the interviewer's like, where'd you get the name? And he's just like, he almost sounds like he's confessing. He's just like laughing. Just He's kind of like, we stole it from Alice in Chains. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, they did. Wow. But huh. I loved him. I still, I, I think. I'm that not into their new stuff. I'll no, 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 no. The first three, something happened when that four album came out with his vocal it didn't it lost the intensity and ever since that i just can't i can't do it but the first three i could still listen to for sure so i remember they put some of those songs on the prince of persia warrior within oh man we could do a game. whole show on soundtrack oh man we'll definitely tony have to hawk do that. three we'll have to do that next time well that was a good list yeah man that was a good uh, we, uh, obviously it was good enough for us to talk for almost an hour and a half here so yep but and uh yeah lo- maybe next time what we'll do is we'll we'll talk about some of our some of our least favorite new metal st- uh, albums or songs or whatever or or we can even get into you know some uh soundtracks from some video games that were really pivotal for us cool but, uh, oh. yeah good well, idea Corey. well uh with that being said uh, i've been Corey kamori i've been john conway thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time later